Today we are waking up in the ghost town. We survived the night. We didn't get haunted to death. Simon is getting some bee suits prepared for us and when he comes back and shows us the bee suits him and Robin get these really cool like <laughs> brand new yellow Aww. bee suits and I sort of make a joke like oh you're disguising to be a bee in those um, and so basically they're suited up and they become one with the bees while I get the old bee suit which is a huge suit that used to be white and now it's covered in dirt so anyway, we all look awesome. I look more awesome than the rest. And we get on the gator and we head over to where Simon is keeping his bees. They build that natural comb on the on the frame that's yeah. out of wax and then they'll fill it and they'll cap it with honey. He's using some kind of like bag fabric that he's burning and putting it in the smoke gun. So any kind of smoke will actually calm the bees, which I didn't know, I thought they were a special concoction, like, you know, probably weed. At this time of year in winter, the bees are generally calm anyway. He says in summer, it's a whole different story. The bees go nuts and you can barely see like your surroundings because you're just in a black swarm of bees. I'm kind of scared by that story, so I'm kind of happy that it is winter and they are calm because just a few hundred bees going around me is enough for me to deal with. Well, Simon opens the first beehive and straight away you can see a swarm of bees just scanning out. So he told us that this beehive right now only has about 15,000 bees in them. In summer there will be about 100,000 to 150,000, so 10 times more, and they will be much, much more active, so much, much more aggressive. So that's all, that's all honey there, yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> he just gave me about 200 bees and just left and said, just be gentle. <laughs> so Rene is replacing this one which is full of honey with one which is full of nothing. Simon's just taking the time to like take out the trays and check the honey and see how much is being produced and stuff. And me and Robin, we are like kids on a school trip. We have so many different questions and especially for Robin who his dream was officially to see how beekeeping is done. We only talked about this like a couple of weeks ago and just by chance his dreams have come true in New Zealand. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> What an entrance. Oh wow, that's really liquid. It's incredible. It tastes really different than yeah. from is it George Ryan? Mm. Mm. That is good, eh? That is the best honey <laughs> I've ever tasted. Yeah, it is by far the best honey I've ever tasted. Are you guys gonna hold on tight? Uh, this family arrived, they've got two young children of their own and all we know is we're going to the canyon today. Simon is making a trailer and now there's a total of 14 people going to the canyon. I'm just looking at this small little gator and this small little trailer and thinking how the hell is this going to carry all us people? If we need a bus here, we need like a 4x4 four four bus. So we keep on driving and then there's a lot of gullies and, and little streams and muddy parts and Simon just, you know, passing through them. You get a trailer which is bouncing left and right. This whole, whole trip is complete chaos and I am loving it. But eventually we get to a landslip which is thick with mud. There is no way the gator is getting through. <laughs> this is absolute madness. <laughs> It's so wet and sloppy, there is no way we're getting across. The only way we're getting across this landslip is by foot. Now, because everyone else is from New Zealand, they all have their gum boots on, so they are all prepared. It's all right, mate, bit of mud sliding. 
It's pretty crazy how they make their way through this forest with very small kid so smoothly I mean I admire them so they put the plank in they walk on because we pass kind of last we have the most slippery plank that we can barely see on the mud we just kind of like is it you know kind of try to guess where you can put your foot you kind of jump from one tree to another and try to you know like oh, oh, oh. there is like some sharp branches and all of that so yeah just really hard coring it through the mud and that is pretty epic to me we don't need gum boots she said she said we don't eat gumboots! <laughs> Easy. We're just slipping and sliding around and we're kind of like, this is crazy, like I cannot believe we're doing this, like what the hell? But it's also a lot of fun at the same time, it's kind of like you're laughing because it's like a crazy adventure and so unexpected as well. But nevertheless, we get through the landslip, we survive that section. There's just a short bit of track just to walk until we reach our final destination today. Along the way, there is a steep bit of cliff edge with some water trickling down. The kids run there, they already know it's there. They pick it up and start drinking the water and they're like, this is the freshest water you can get. That is fresh water. Mm. I could probably sell it at like five nice, good, good H2O right there. So finally, we're doing our last bit of walking down the track. There's still one more plank of wood to get over. And we come into this huge opening. It's actually huge. Hello! The canyon is really gigantic. It's towering over 250 meters high all around us. I can't describe how amazing that is. So all the kids start scattering around, like running to the trees and, and then go have fun while, you know, all the adults having a nice cold beer, just kind of relaxing. You know, that's your good Sunday right here. It looks like an awesome like place if you were to have a campground here or have like a festival. It looks like a, just a really awesome place. And we get this all to ourselves, except for the there's 14 of us. So it probably does feel a bit like a festival here. It's time to go back exactly the way we came. But this time, you know, because we've already, we already know we can get over that landslip, it's easy enough to make our way back. What are we doing? The only thing we're a bit iffy on is how are they going to turn the gator and the trailer around in a track that is only as wide as the gator. But we find we just back up the trailer a little bit, back up the gator a bit, and we find like a bit that's a, a bit wide so you can navigate the gator around. Laura, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a health and safety officer. <laughs> 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 what about you? I'm going to be a cop. A cop? No. Oh, yeah. What about you? A world um, famous soccer player or a Formula One driver. We just stopped along the way at an old ship shearing station, which is now the house for the hippie sister of the family. Yeah, we just got a quick visit of the house, which is kind of like, you know, that is really embodying ghost town, you know? And there's a lot of wool which have been freshly sheared, which Laura loved to play with. <laughs> so we get back to the house and this is where Robin and I have to depart because we are going to, we're leaving New Zealand and we're going to the Republic of Bangamamona tonight and staying at the hotel there. I will tell you all about the Republic of Bangamamona tomorrow because we're going to be spending more time here. Robin's flying the drone, which is much to the entertainment of the children who are running around after it. They want to catch it out the sky. 